Good evening everyone, or good afternoon, it's the evening. The sun's just starting to go down here at Boat Rocker Barrel Room. I'm with uh, Matt Horton, and um, for those that don't know you, Matt, I guess the first question would be, um, we know you, I know you're a home brewer and now you're a pro brewer. What got you into brewing both at home first and then becoming a pro brewer? Uh, good question. I look, my love of travel and beer and it has always intrigued me. Uh, Michael Jackson, the beer writer, was probably one of the main inspirations. Um, and then from there, travelling over through Europe, drinking lots of beer and uh, being sick of the bland VB and, and Carlton Draft that's available locally. So it was just like, I, I want to do better. I've had what's in Europe, so the inspiration was definitely through my travels. Fantastic. And I remember uh, dropping in and seeing you when we were in South Dandenong and there wasn't as many barrels around. In fact, I think you were brewing lots of uh, hoppy beers and pilsners over the road. So. What got you enticed into wood and barrels and beer? Um, there was a moment, uh, a brewery, which I'm sure your viewers are familiar with, uh, Cantillon. Ah, yes. Um, was a, a, a must-go-to sort of place, so I thought, yep, I'll go to Cantillon, have a look. And never having had a sour beer, this is back in 20-odd 20, 20 years ago now, um, just being absolutely blown away by the rusticness of this cobwebbed brewery and then a jug of flat... Uh, still beer uh, that had um, this amazing funk and really blew my mind. So that was like, I need to learn more about this. Fantastic. So did you start your journey into barrels and professional brewing with um, sour beers? And probably we should talk about this wonderful beer we're enjoying, your Saison Sour. Yeah, Sunshine and Rainbows, uh, yeah. designed for sunshine or rainbows, basically. Yeah, was, uh, I tried to come up with a food match and... <laughs> couldn't, couldn't go up with the, uh, with, the, with the food match and thought, oh, bugger it, Let's, it'll food match, sunshine and rainbows. And I thought that's actually a better name than what I originally had. So it's, it's Great stuck. Name. Yeah, that's very, very easy drinking. Beautiful but light beer. Delicately mm. soured. Mm. Um, yeah, look, I think with, with beers in general, uh, I've always wanted to have a play around with wood. I've mucked around with wild organisms as a home brewer. Yeah. Um, doing it commercially is a different scale volume and everything else is very different so uh, wanted to make sure that I mean, a lot of it threw myself in learned myself yes. but then there's some great resources out there milk the funk uh -huh. um, there are some uh, mad fermentationist uh, yes. Michael Tonsme is his name yes. he's got a book out yeah. um, dealing with, with wild yeah. and American sour beers yeah. there's information out there the internet you can find anything on the internet, yeah. good or bad. Uh, well, that's why I'm here today, because we're going to talk about barrels. I picked this barrel up here, this Lark barrel, which we're not supposed to mention where I got it, but it was in a bulk buy and, and that sort of thing. And I look on the internet about, you know, barrels, and then I thought, I get something that says I should do this, and then something I should do that. So I thought, how am I going to know whether this barrel is good to brew with or to put the uh, French toast double brown ale in? I thought, I'll ring Matt, because you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you discover, as you went through researching on Milk the Funk and the Net, and, and t I guess talking to your friends in brewing, what was true and what was uh, not so true? Yeah, well, a lot of trial and error. <laughs> okay. You've, you've got to trust your judgment as well. If okay. something sounds questionable, yeah. then straight away you need to start looking into how that might work and think about all the possibilities that might be negative. Okay. Um, you question everything. Fox Mulder yes. is always right. Um, okay. <laughs> pretty much. Um, the truth, but the truth is out there as well. So yeah, it's, good point. Good uh, point. I guess it comes down to what you want to brew. If you yes. want to brew, as you want to brew a, a maple brown ale, yes. uh, which is yep. a, a quite a heavy alcohol yes. beer, yep. and you want to get the spirit notes from the wood, That's it. then you've got to look at the barrel as a clean barrel. Yep. Um, whereas if you're purely want to just brew uh, a Flanders Red or yep. uh, a Wild Ale or some description, yep. then you can look at the barrel in a very different light. Um, right. And also the wood will probably be quite different as well. Yeah. Um, and you can get away with treating barrels differently. But That's a good question or a little segue into that, Matt, would be, um, you know, for funky beers like Flanders Reds and, and Old Bruins and things like that, would I use a whiskey barrel or a you, wine barrel? You can use a whiskey yep. barrel. Yeah. Um, but... From a commercial viewpoint, and I'm talking yeah. purely commercially, yeah. we would try and capture that whiskey note with a beer uh, that might be a clean beer. Yeah. Um, but having said that, we've got some really good uh, beer that is yeah. already seen a, a sour barrel, yeah. uh, but then we intentionally put it into freshly emptied whiskey casks. Uh -huh. 
to make a whiskey sour. Ah, interesting. Um, which yeah. we did a, a, did that probably about a year and a half ago now, uh, okay. and the result was fantastic. Yeah. So we thought, let's do a large volume. Yeah. Um, so you can look at it two ways, but I guess traditionally, if you've got a freshly emptied whiskey barrel, yeah. you'll put something bigger and richer yeah. that can withstand uh, the longer aging process, I guess, once it's even out of the barrel, it'll yeah. last for a long time. Yeah. And so all the, the wild beers, they'll last for a long time as well. Yeah. Um, but I guess it depends on your bent. Whether you want to go for yeah. that nice winter resource or yes. a special celebration beer yeah. that might be richer and higher in alcohol. Well, um, in, in this case, I got two. So I was fortunate enough to get two. So my thought was to put the maple brown ale into this one that we've got here today and we can um, pull it apart and have a look and see if it's any good or not. And then this the other one, do an imperial stout. But I did hope to sort of separate it and have one barrel for clean brewing and one for sours so is that possible to do because clearly you've done you've in the barrel room here which is a magnificent place you've got you know your fantastic ramgen imperial stouts and then you're talking about sour beers as well is it yeah. possible to cohabitate it is yeah. Look, for a barrel room and we we <laughs> our distiller uh, yeah. lex yeah um uh, actually <laughs> started making sourdough uh, oh, right. and he basically gets the flour and water mixture puts yeah. it in the back Ah, open fantastic. to the elements, yeah. um, and it's got really active cultures happening. House um, culture. House culture. Fantastic. So, and I, look, I've known that you, know, you can't contain these organisms terribly yeah. well, yeah. Um, but the chance of them getting into the barrel through the wood in a six to 12 month period is very slim. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, if you don't, we douse, when it, with our clean barrels, yeah. uh, we douse them with ethanol, 70% ethanol solution. Okay. Um, before we open up the bung and have a look. Okay. Um, on the outside? On the outside, okay. because there it's is dust tip. and everything else. Yep. Um, yep. And then, then we do whatever sampling we need yep. to do. Um, so would that be a good idea to do that uh, when we get back to the uh, Beer Co warehouse tomorrow or the next day, douse that? I mean, we'll open this one here today, but I do have... Look, we have uh, a super bit. cool, seventy percent ethanol. Yeah, it'll sprayer. Have a sprayer. Yeah. yeah, that's um, it. Yep. Mister, yep. Just, yep. Doesn't need to be yep. super dripping wet, just enough yep. to yep. douse it. I mean, it's been you know yep. floating around from Tasmania that's to, true. to here, so yep. a good chance it might have something that could land in. But okay, and it's about three uh, months old. I think I picked that up November, December, um, just before the Christmas break. Hence, yep. it sort of sat under the stairs. That, that should um, still have a really punchy okay. uh, whiskey note to it. Um, yep. Smaller barrels have a larger surface area to volume ratio, so yep. the evaporation yep. rate will be higher in the 50. Yes. Um, yep. But having said that, it will still have whiskey in the wood. Yes. Like the chance of it being completely yep. evaporated is yep. unrealistic, I yep. think, so you'll yep. still get plenty of whiskey note out of that. Okay. Um, and if that had been you know, more than three months, or, or I guess we'll understand when we start pulling the cork, um, what would I do if I got an old barrel or one of our customers got an old barrel from a friend or something out of the shed? Um, could they condition it to bring it back up, uh, putting whiskey Look, in you, it? Look, you could, yeah, absolutely. If you've, I mean, that's a 20 to 30 litre barrel, is that yes, right? Yes, I think it looks like it's about 25, I'm hoping. Um, so you it could... says 59.5 kilos, so I'm guessing that's... Uh... Look, it looks roughly like a 25. Yeah, it does. It looks like a 25 litre, and that's about yeah. how much beer I've brewed. That's the other thought I had was I'm going to fill it on uh, a brew day in case yeah. I need to put some more yeah, exactly. in it. I'll brew a high gravity. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it look, I, a good way that we haven't done it, but I know people do do it, uh, particularly with spirit barrels. If they haven't been used, they've dried out a little bit too much. Yeah. You can rehydrate with uh, some spirit, uh -huh. um, buy something half decent. Yeah. Um, you lose some uh, to the wood. Yeah. And you can always just pour out the rest. So pour in a litre or two. It yes. cost you 70, 80 yeah. bucks for yeah. something. Yeah. Maybe more, 100, 120 dollars. Well, so that was a good good point too there is do we get a good spirit to put in the barrel or does, you know, Johnny Walker uh, red work probably? Oh, I'm of the opinion that like, get a good like cooking, yeah. you use a good wine to cook okay. with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Same point. if you're going to season a barrel. Excellent. Um, I wouldn't, you, it's up to your own budget, I yeah. guess, but you can yeah. go a $300 yeah. bottle of scotch. Yeah. But yeah. I'd be thinking, you know, a, a local... Yeah. Craft whiskey. Craft whiskey. Yep. Um, camp campus one? Yeah, we don't, no, we don't do a whiskey. Oh, uh, don't you? Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Starwood, though. Starwood. Yeah, Starwood. yeah, Starwood's another um, good one. Yeah. Lark, obviously. Yeah, Lark, lark yeah, if you can get um, your hands on it. Yeah. Um, that would be one I would think about, you know, putting in, and you only need a litre or two, yeah. and you just roll the barrel. Yeah. So each, then leave it, let it season for a week or so. Fantastic. 
uh, you can find out then the wood should start swelling. Yeah. You lose a fair bit of spirit. Yeah. Um, before, if it's really dried out and that's a yeah, yeah. 12 months plus, yeah. the, the hoops are loose. Um, these are okay. the hoops, if they're loose, um, that's the first sign that maybe we've got a uh, barrel that needs some love and attention. Is absolutely, that? Yeah. 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 So I'd recommend uh, Bunnings. Yes. Buy a, uh, it's like virtually a cold chisel, basically, yes. but it yep. allows you to. Yep. I'll tip it on top. Basically, allows you to get a rubber mallet mm -hmm. and you just can you know, tighten the hoops. Yep. You don't have to hit really hard, you just work your way around. All right. Um, Coopers are probably going to laugh at me doing this. Yep. So, uh, um, most of this sort of on how to look after a barrel is yep. uh, <clears throat> on YouTube. You yes. can actually find yes. how to cooper a barrel and how to take off the hoops from yeah, the right. head. Yep. Um, and I've managed to teach myself all of that. I was um, going to say, you could just about learn to do open heart surgery on uh, okay. YouTube. How to. You, <laughs> you might have... get in trouble with the authorities. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, someone's absolutely. done a video on everything. I've certainly it's Googled very, how to grow true. your own hops, how to smoke your own malt, and someone out there has done it before us. Yeah, so, yeah no, absolutely fantastic. true. Fantastic. Okay, um, so we've checked the hoops. Check the um, hoops there, tight. nice and yeah. tight. Looking yeah. at this barrel, I'd say that is uh, in, in very good condition. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing, if you get a barrel, uh, yep. we get quite a lot of bourbon barrels. Yep. Um, they always come with a, a bung. Yes. That's a hard wooden bung. Yes. So Absolutely they're not that, easy yep. to get out. So the only way no. to get them out, you can't just pull them out of your hand. You need to no. uh, basically get a screw yep. and a hammer. You screw the, the, um, the screw in. Here, shall I show, uh, I'll show our uh, listeners that? So we'll put this barrel down. It's one we prepared earlier, just like so a the, cooking yeah, shop. Exactly. <laughs> So that's the, that's yeah. the screw in there. Okay. And what we can do is get the nail. So uh, you've hammer. put a screw in there. Um, yep, big screw. Remember? How old would spot. this barrel be, Matt? This is one of your own that you had out oh, the back. This is it? probably from the same bulk buy that you had. Ah, uh, so. here we go. <laughs> Which shall remain nameless. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And. It's uh, definitely I those can smell got, whiskey in there. Those who've got smartphones, which I think yeah. is probably most of the population who's watching YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's dry yeah. in there. But yes, it is dry, isn't but it? it's um, you'll see a little bit of charring. Yeah, you'll see can. The, yep. the scale. Yeah. Um, but the smell is still strong. Very strong. So you'll get a really good whiskey note on that. So you would probably look um, if you don't use that in the next short while. You would think right. I'll um, pour a liter of quality whiskey in there. To... Yeah, um, an another month or two, I'd, I'd yep. be looking at putting some extra yep. spirit in there to, yeah, to help rejuvenate that that spirit note. Right. You've got to remember as well, once that whiskey, if you pour the whiskey in, um, you've got to make sure that <clears throat> um, you've got to make sure that you tip it out. You don't want to have a litre or two of whiskey in there yes. and put your 20 litres of beer in because it will be uh, Super way strong. too strong and yeah. not, not, yeah. not very palatable. But one thought I had after talking to you about the recipe for French toast was, um, was you had good advice there about let's put some of the maple in like a into the secondary fermentation. So can I put the maple in after I pour the beer, it's just about finished its primary, into the barrel, then put another 250 uh, mils of maple in and almost have like a secondary fermentation inside the barrel. So I'm driving out uh, oxygen and will that help um, you, fight off you know, any potential wild bacteria? Or... Yeah, look, you could, but I think you're more likely, for a barrel aging with a, a yeah. maple brown, you're probably gonna to wanna to leave it for maybe three to six yeah. months yeah, approximately. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you do a secondary ferment in the barrel with bad yeast, uh -huh. there's a good chance it'll autolyze and yeah, get, uh, uh, off, yeah, so you get some off flavors. Okay. You're probably better off doing complete uh, complete fermentation. And I think for yeah. barrels as well, that, yeah, that are uh, spirit barrels, you might get half a percent alcohol maybe yeah. out of the barrel in that condition, yeah. extra. Yeah. Um, so you'd want to make sure you put in a beer that's you know, pretty clean. seven, eight percent. Yeah. And uh, right. And yeah. hopefully find uh, yeah. most of the uses dropped out. Yeah. Um, the alcohol content alone should help prevent yes. uh, anything as long yeah. as that barrel hasn't had anything else in it. So it's unlikely to have any sour organisms that can survive yes. yeah, good point. Uh, the interior well, of that barrel. And the spirit is a natural, um, oh, I guess it's almost like a natural uh, disinfectant or antiseptic to the bacteria anyway, isn't it? It is, yeah. absolutely. Look, and yeah. the, the spirit cast strength spirit is around the, the 60 to 70 yeah, percent mark anyway yeah, so yeah. it's like the ideal amount yeah. for, for yeah. killing uh, yeah. bacteria and, yeah. and right. dried yeast okay. so okay um okay well that's good so what i'll do then is i'll finish the secondary luckily it's in the fermentosaurus so i can just tuck it in the top mm -hmm. rack off the yeast and then pour the barrel in and then um 
once we've drained the maple brown ale and consumed it probably in three to six months time or Christmas time will be a lovely yep. um, on the <clears> Christmas <throat> table I now want to use it for sour brewing um, mm -hmm. do I just drain it package my beer and put you know more work straight in or what would I do with the barrel once you've emptied it like do you have barrels that you continuously use in the brewery? yeah look all our um, all our bourbon barrels spirit barrels yeah. they undergo uh, what we call a clean beer yeah. gets placed into them after the clean beer gets placed into them we then determine do we uh, keep that barrel now we've got a distillery we might put spirits back into them yep um, no but, a great way to keep it uh, clean and uh, absolutely and re yeah. reuse that the whole yes. cycle of yep. wood yep. and then beer um, yep. but what we might also do is when we've got a number of barrels that particularly the bourbons mm -hmm. where uh, they're not that but the, the, the second generation second use yeah or third use technically I guess uh, is not that that good yeah um, so okay. we've, we've turned them into sour barrels so um, once you've used a barrel say two or three times with clean beer without going back into the distillery you're saying it starts to lose any of the wood whiskey notes yeah look or, even like second use we, second we, use. we tried redoing yeah. Yeah. Uh, see if we could get do a, a refill straight away yeah uh, with ramjet into yes. bourbon barrels yep the effect is just not that you, wonderful okay so you notice so, that a, a drop off in the wood character and the whiskey character yeah yeah yep. it was it was massive so it's like okay yeah. well, from now on we're just going to turn all our bourbons uh into sour beer yeah um, right receptacles yep. yeah but now with the distillery we might put something yeah. else in them and yes. then and then yeah. we'll, we'll yep. see how it all yeah. plans out um because there's still enough that. flavor that we, we find that sour beers yep. particularly flanders reds with yes they they a wood character in that uh, yeah. it's a far more delicate beer yes. um, body wise and yeah. uh, it yeah. might be punchy with sourness but it's yeah. not necessarily hasn't got that sugar yes. or the, the high roast malt content yes. to cope with the wood so yeah. you yeah. can get a lot of wood character in a short period of time sure so it can work really nicely okay. with that. yeah right so certainly uh, tailoring the style of beer you're brewing <laughs> to the age of the barrel or the, or the number of uses yeah like I was just thinking there too as you were talking about that Matt maybe um if it's um, a barrel that we've done one or two clean beers and you could even put like a, like you said, a, a, a red sour or a golden sour or something lighter Absolutely. and more delicate that you don't want too much wood character in. Absolutely, and that's exactly what I've been doing. Work. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. You, you'll draw the, the, I mean, the whiskey, I don't know how old the whiskey was, but most of the spirit will draw a lot of that, that wood mm. Uh, mm. flavor out. Yeah. So yep. what's left in there? There'll be enough for a beer. Yeah. Whether you'll start getting diminishing returns. So yep. for a golden blonde or a Flanders red would be yeah, sure. Would be perfect. I guess some of the questions too. I'm thinking out loud here, but some of the questions that some of our listeners would have is, um, if they're looking to buy a barrel, is there anything they should look for? Um, say they are inspecting one, they come across one second hand, or or there's a bulk buy on or something. Um, what sort of things should they look for in terms of the quality of the barrel or knowing that it's something that they're going to be able to get those repeat uses out of? Yeah, look, I think one of the important things, I mean, there's small little whiskey barrels, they're yes. generally very compact, yep. uh, not a lot of issues can go wrong, the length okay. of the stave yep. doesn't mean that there can be a lot of uh, issues. Bending and um, bowing and But bucking. one of the, yep. the key things that, that yep. uh, particularly larger barrels, wine yep. barrels and co, yep. Yep. they'll have on the top you might yep. get a crack in the stave uh, yes. where it's yep. split yep. Um, and that's a surefire sign that you'll get a lot more oxygen, oxygen exposure yep. um, so you need to monitor yep. and, and, and ask, the, ask yourself whether you know, the beer you're going to put in there is really going to suffer from that yep. um, higher oxygen exposure. Yep. Um, that's probably one of the easiest signs to spot. Um, yep. Other than that you've really got to trust your nose. Yeah right. Um, yep. I, Again, the torch on the phone, yes, or even yeah, a little mag yeah, light if you've got one. Yeah, yeah. Look inside it. Yeah. Um, and what should you, we, you be looking for inside? Is it uh, spirit barrels less so uh, a problem? But I think with wine barrels, uh, one of the biggest issues with wine is Acetobacter, okay. uh, mold, okay. um, and I guess to a lesser extent, um, tartrate, tartaric acid crystals. Yes. Yeah. Um, they can be removed, tartaric acid yeah. crystals, but if they're left. And some wines, you see barrels, you, you shine a light in, it's like looking into Aladdin's cave. It's Is that right? Glistening little, little wow. uh, crystals. flickering crystals. And wow. what we've done, we've pulled some of those barrels apart and there's a thick crust of yeah. tartaric acid crystals. Wow. And what happens underneath that is that provides a perfect little home for harbouring 
uh, Acetobacter, oh. um, bad yeah, v- uh, the wild vin- yeast. Good if you want to make vinegar, not good if you want to make sour beer. Exactly. And so what happens is it, it, even if you steam that, mm-hmm. you're not removing it. And so all it does uh, underneath okay. is just provide a home that, that okay. is basically okay. full of, full of uh, things that can ruin your beer very quickly. Okay. So uh, a quick look inside. If you see any blue mould, yeah. um, white mould, yeah. a good thing is run your finger. Yeah. Uh, around, put your bung. finger into yep. the bung and yep. run, run it around, see if yep. anything comes out on your finger. Okay. Um, it's often a favourite hiding spot because as the barrel fills up, yep. it won't be full to the brim over the bung. Yes. And so there'll be moisture in that top little bit. Uh-huh. And if you can pull out and scrape out some blue or white mould, then you'd probably say no thanks. Okay. Um, pass. Yeah. Pass on yeah. that one. Yep. And again, yep. the smell. If you can smell vinegar, yeah. uh, it's a good chance it's got Acetobacter. Yeah. Um, if you can... Something just smells not quite right. It might be like yep. a, a, a blue cheese smell. Yep. Um, it could be uh, something just a bit musty. Mm-hmm. Um, then you mm-hmm. question yeah. how good that barrel is going to be. Yeah, if you have right. to spend three hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, it's yep. a lot of money for something. Yes, Let alone the time taken yeah. Yeah. Uh, to fill it up with, with yes. beer. So, yeah, all the time to brew it and then fill it. And we've certainly seen some of our customers in the clubs, in particular, who will get a barrel and then work together as a team. You know, ten of them brew a brew each and then yep. put it in, which is a smart way to do it. But like you say, you don't want to have um, all that work if um, you've got a poor quality product. I guess it's pretty difficult to make a good good beer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's that's one of those things. You just got to trust your instincts. Yeah. The nose is one of the most sensitive organisms in your whole body, so right. you'll be able to pick up something that's not quite right. It smells yeah. like oak yeah. or um, yeah, a, a nice red wine. Yes. Then or yeah. white wine. Then okay. it'll be an absolute cracker. Well, thanks for taking time. Before we wrap up today, there was a couple other quick ones I want to talk about. We're talking about whiskey barrels today. Um, I don't have a wine barrel on me, but um, is there any particular preps if any of our customers are buying wine barrels or got access to a wine barrel, whether it's a small one or a large one, that they should do before they put their sour beers or things into them? Yeah, look, absolutely. I think if you get a a larger format barrel Mm -hmm. as a home brewer, you may not be filling it up straight away. Yes. Um, One of the easiest things, it's not ideal for the amount of water but in the scheme of things it's probably yep. not that bad uh, if you can make a, a solution of potassium metabisulfite yes uh, yep. and citric acid yeah um, I forget the exact amounts don't um, worry we'll go- put it Google. in the show notes yeah 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 um, I'm pretty sure I've seen that and you answer. then create basically dissolve that in hot water yes uh, put that into the barrel yeah and you fill out that barrel uh, to the brim okay um, would you fill that with like 80 degrees or boiling or, or you don't want to fill it with no. i think if you're going to re if you want to reinvigorate a barrel for yep. immediate use then you yep. use boiling hot water okay but you really just want to dissolve the, the, okay. the, the okay. chemicals so and then fill it up with ambient yep. tap water okay. right. uh filtered yep. tap water that is gotcha. chlorinated yes um, okay. yep otherwise yep. you'll taint the wood yeah, um, yeah. So you just want to make sure, and then that will help swell the barrel, uh, keep certain things at bay. Yeah. The only downside with that is I'm um, thinking about people who haven't got steam yes. ones to be able to see yeah, their barrels because yeah. Um, yeah. this is an easy way to be able to keep your barrel swollen yeah. and uh, effectively bug free. Yeah. But you need to replenish that liquid probably every two to three months. Uh, um, okay. So you want to use it in that time frame. So Other than that, find a local winemaker or a local yeah, brewer who's got right. a steam wand. Yeah. Steam that barrel, okay, uh, and then sulphur it, which is okay. the little sulphur discs. Um, Are they the wee like the candles that light them? And they yeah, they put them onto yeah. a little. We just get a, yeah. a coat hanger. Okay, uh, put yep. a, a long yep. rod with it. Basically, put a couple okay. of uh, sulphur little discs on the on yep. the end, light them with a, okay. a lighter or a couple right. of matches, and then put it in. A little sulphur. Okay. No um, problem in a wine barrel, but I'm thinking that might be a bit of a dangerous thing to do in a uh, spirit barrel. Yes, in a spirit barrel, no don't flame, do don't, don't, don't don't no flames, no flames in, just a no. uh, warning there. <laughs> yeah, unless you, unless you want to, you know, health and fight. safety, yeah. fireworks party. Yeah, in case um, work cover was watching. Um, yeah, no, that's great. And then two other things, I guess we can't come all the way down to your wonderful barrel room and enjoy your um, Saison Sour without asking, have you got any special releases coming up out of barrels, whether they're spirit barrels or we, sour barrels in we've 2018? Got, yeah, <laughs> we've, we've always got barrels coming right. out. Uh, we've got... Obviously, uh, Ramjet is mm-hmm. one of the, the big mm. ones. Uh, we've got a very special one coming up uh, in Good Beer Week, but I can't oh, say more than that until yeah, Good great. Beer Week launches. Stay um, tuned for that one. We've got the return of Banshee, our oh, yes. uh, 14% yes. barley wine, yes. Asian Star Whiskey Casks. Wow. And we've got a uh, Star Whiskey Cask Quad. Oh, as well. fantastic. So that's, wow, that's Belgian Quad. Great. And if um, customers are watching from interstate or abroad, um, 
how would they uh, do you have something like the I don't know the boat rocker barrel club or something where people can sign up for alerts um, because I guess the thing is you're okay you've got a lot of barrels here but still probably not enough for everyone and uh, everywhere and if they go to their local bottle shop and they can't find it is there any way they can that's right well, we're actually in the process of launching uh, a club called kinfolk oh, um, good idea. Yeah. which you'll be able to join yep. pay a quarterly fee yep. and get guaranteed uh, access to special releases okay fantastic and um, do you filter your sour beers in case a home brewer wanted to do uh, dregs half no we, we don't filter oh, them so they're yeah. Yeah. Uh, really just what is in there is in there yeah. uh, oh, always great. so yeah, um, some of our sour beers uh, we've got pediococcus multiple strains of Britannomyces uh, we've got a, a beer that is um, 100% spontaneous fermentation wow. Brayside uh, spontaneous wow. fermentation that'll Fantastic. be coming out later this year as well great. Um, and that is full of wild organisms and they are Unpredictable, yes. um, and we even the fresh food source we have to carbonate. We we add sugar, oh, wow. and it does a secondary fermentation. Uh, then you'll get some diacetyl thrown up um, wow. by the, the yep. PDO. Yeah, that takes about six to eight weeks to get reabsorbed by bread. So nice. Well, I guess if um, what we might say that for another video episode on how to wrangle drinks. But if there's <laughs> people who try one of your wonderful sour beers and really fall in love with it, and they think I um. I want to get a head start on sour brewing. One of the ways to do that, because that could be multiple, you know, lives of that culture as they could Absolutely. harvest a little bit off the bottom and culture it up. So we might show that. And um, I guess it would be remiss of me um, not to ask the question I asked you before when I was wandering around and I saw the nail. <laughs> why, why the nail? Why does everyone uh, hammer nails into the barrels? Uh, yeah, to... look, very good question. There's a, a gentleman in America. Called uh, Vinci Lerzo, who has Russian yes. River. Yep. Very famous yep. brewery. Um, they work in Inches, uh, Bunnings, yep. and they recommend McMaster Car, which we don't have here, unfortunately. Okay. We, we have Bunnings instead. <laughs> yeah. um, so basically, Bunnings sell a flathead stainless yes. nail, uh, yep. 2.8 millimeter. So you recommend um, a stainless steel nail? If it is yep. absolutely stainless steel yep. by Russ, yep. 316 yep. stainless steel. Uh, we yep. get a drill bit, 2.8 millimeter diameter. Uh -huh. uh, we get a Trading pack of, of uh, drill bits uh, that are 2.5 millimeters. Yes. So the hole will never be bigger than the nail. Gotcha. So it's, it's nice basically a, a nice tight seal. Mm -hmm. It allows us to then draw a sample, particularly of our barrel beers that, yes. that form a pellicle. Yes. That means we're not disrupting that pellicle uh, on the top of the barrel by putting a, um, a wine thief in or a beer thief in. Yeah, um, sure. It sure. allows us to draw a sample that yeah. is representative generally of the middle batch of the beer. Yeah. Um, and it's just quick and easy from the front access of the barrel right. uh, without having to get in. As you can see, yep. the racks, yep. it's really hard to get on top. Mm -hmm. And often wine thieves are quite long, so it's yeah, a, bit of a point. bit of a tedious... Yeah, uh, you couldn't get into rows two or, or three on that case. Uh, no. Because so, of the... Yeah, great. I always get a ladder. And nail. would you do, do the nail two for your um, Imperials and your Stouts and barley when, wines as well? When we own the barrels, we, yes. we do. Ah. <sighs> When we don't oh, own the barrels. So sometimes you'll, uh, with your relationship with Starwood or something, you'll take a barrel and then does it go back there, does That's it? That's right, oh, yeah. Fantastic. So we have a, a, sometimes a, a loan agreement. Sometimes That's we great. buy the barrels off them. Yeah. Um, but generally, yeah, the, the bourbon barrels, yes, we'll, we'll put something in. It's a nice um, virtuous uh, circle, isn't it? Very sustainable. It is, yeah, yeah. For as long as that wood can give something to yeah, both fantastic. spirit and beer, absolutely. So I guess before we depart, um, top three tips for home brewers looking to brew beer in barrels. What should they, uh, you know, if someone walks in, and I'm sure they do, probably every Thursday, Friday night, and <laughs> you haven't say, man, I've got a barrel, I'm going to do a brew in it. What advice do you have? Um, um, smell the barrel, mm -hmm. inspect it, make sure it is uh, in sound condition. Um, if it is sound condition, you trust your instincts and it smells good. Yeah. Uh, then I would work out what you want to put into it. Yeah. Um, and do I need to actually do anything to that barrel to get it ready for taking the beer? Um, does it need to be swollen? Yeah. Uh, do I need to put spirit in it, let it reabsorb? Yeah. Um, then last, I think probably more about the aging of the barrel. Yes. Uh, once you put the beer in, yeah. I recommend finding your beer if it's uh, yes. a big beer, uh, okay. um, just to help get rid of any yeast. Okay, just um, put some so glass or something in, make yeah. sure it's crystal clear before you put it in. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, once it's done that, then I would also recommend um, aging your beer, put it somewhere cool mm -hmm. uh, without too many fluctuating temperatures, mm -hmm. um, ideally below you know, 
20 degrees would okay. be great. If you yeah. haven't got that, it's under pretty hard. Under the stairs. In, the house. Under the stairs. <laughs> uh, under the house, in the cellar. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, and if you're a little small one like this, you know, yeah. maybe maybe uh, somewhere it works, but a nice cool place. Yes, um, yeah. Somewhere in the centre of the house where there's no windows or... Um, I guess the other thing too, you could even uh, like similar to a fermentation fridge, you could get a fridge which would uh, absolutely an cool. old unused fridge yeah, yeah. would keep that it look something that's going to keep it constant. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing to remember with a small barrel like this is that uh, things will age faster. Yes. So more wood to more surface wood to liquid, area. Yeah. yeah. So surface area um, to liquid ratio is much bigger. Yeah. So I guess after like we might age some beers for three months. Yeah. Um, six months yeah but i would recommend it might be on the shorter side of things yeah um and so even you would recommend some tasting then um you know with the nail or yeah with a clean least. beer you could do it with a wine thief i guess too. yeah absolutely yeah. We, yeah. we get we have sterile pipettes we just yeah. okay. sample yeah. each one so Great. we cross contaminate um yeah. but you could look at uh yeah after a month have a taste yeah and okay. don't taste too often because all you're doing is exposing that beer to yeah oxygen. To oxygen. every time you open yeah. it up um, and then not with the number one and two enemies of beer is an oxygen and uh, heat, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, um, yeah. The other thing to remember, I didn't point out, but mm -hmm. uh, the wooden bungs are okay, mm -hmm. um, but if you've got a silicon bung... Yes. Um, so once you unmatched. remove that wooden bung and fill it with beer, pop a silicon bung in. Absolutely, yeah. 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 They're at $5 from yeah, exactly. the store. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, well, thank you that's so it. much for your time, Matt. It's been a pleasure thank you. popping down uh, to the Boat Rocker Barrel Room, and we'll update you all with uh, more information on the... French toast, double brown ale um, in the next episode. Look forward to tasting it.